our relations were really very, very disturbed uh, for reasons I think all of you know. We have made some progress in what we call disengagement. There are very large number of Chinese troops deployed along the line of actual control who were not there uh, before 2020. Yes, uh, we have uh, made uh, some progress. Uh, you know, our relations were really very, very disturbed uh, for reasons I think all of you know. Uh, we have made some progress in what we call disengagement, which is when troops were very close to each other uh, with the possibility that it could lead to uh, some untoward incident. Uh, but uh, that's one part of the issue. Uh, there are other aspects. The fact is, uh, you know, there are very large number of Chinese troops deployed along the line of actual control who were not there uh, before 2020. And we in turn have counter deployed. Uh, and there are other aspects of the relationship which also got affected during, during this period. So clearly, uh, we have to see after the disengagement, what is the direction uh, we go. But we do think the disengagement is a welcome step. Uh, it, uh, it opens up the possibility that, uh, you know, other steps could happen. Uh, the expectation after Prime Minister Modi met President Xi was that uh, uh, both the National Security Advisor and myself, we would meet our counterpart. Uh, so uh, that's really where things are. What does it mean for the Quad? Look, the Quad, I would say, has a bigger purpose. Uh, the, I mean, think of the Quad. I mean, you have four democracies, uh, four market economies, four countries with a strong record of global contributions, all of whom, by the way, happen to be maritime nations, who have found a kind of a common agenda on which to work. Not uh, a security agenda. I mean, the Quad does many things, I mean, from connectivity and climate forecasting to fellowships to... Uh, so uh, there are a whole sort of uh, set of activities out here. And in a way, you can say, because it relates to your final observation, look, the, the kind of expectations that the world had from the United States uh, in the 40s and 50s and 60s, they are not realistic anymore. I mean, in the United States, I mean, irrespective of what happens in the election, the fact is the United States will, its own global contributions, relatively speaking, are going to be less. Now, there will be a deficit. So we have to ask ourselves, do we leave the deficit unaddressed? Is it addressed by somebody with a very different vision of the global order? Or do those who have a sort of a common interest and a common vision actually come together. So the Quad is really option three, which is uh, four countries who, who feel on many basic issues that they have uh, 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 a common uh, viewpoint uh, working together. And, uh, but there is, I mean, no question that, uh, I mean, just the numbers tell you, if you look at, you know, what were the top 10 economies of the world uh, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. You can see there's a shift from the West. Uh, and I think Australian foreign policy has also made those adjustments. And part of our own relationship today with Australia is, uh, you know, we also, for us, we, you know, many years ago, we started with something uh, called Look East. This was during Narsimharaoji's time. And then it kept developing from the ASEAN, beyond the ASEAN. I think today, the, the, you know, Modiji made it activist, then we took it further, saying that we need to, you know, particularly engage the Indo-Pacific countries. So, uh, my sense is India is looking much more towards the Pacific. More than half our trade, by the way, is actually done east of India. Australia is looking much more towards Asia and the Indo-Pacific, and I think that is one of the reasons today why our relationship uh, is so much stronger.